of Jyotisha. And then we have ether. Ether is basically akash, is space. It's what contains everything else. So oh. Jupiter is associated with space, akash. Okay, so what other areas on your body do you find ether? It's the most important, as you know, uh, in India, they invented, so to speak, the zero, <laughs> the space. And that's why you were able to mathematically be able to have higher mathematical calculations because of the space everybody forgets. They just think of earth, wind, fire, and air. I mean, and the four elements, but they forget space without that to contain it means nothing. Okay. So where do you find space in your body? I, I have zero, zero knowledge of Ayurveda. <laughs> so you would find space in, in the ears, in the sound. Okay, so that's why these are like little speakers. And that's why the ears form like this. And then you find space in the lumen of the small intestine. Okay. So you need the space. You find space inside the, the uh, circumference of the blood vessels. So mm -hmm. what happens when they start to constrict, you get high blood pressure. Oh. All right. So even ether is important. It's even important to have space in your home. Okay. So less is more. A lot of times now people are, I, I, I say Vasta because that's something else that I also um, teach. And mm -hmm. so you think about it, your, your body is made. I mean, architecture is, is Chitra. You know, the, it's, the architecture of your body is exactly like the architecture of a home. So think of your home where you live in also to be congruent with your body. So you put too many things inside your home you're going to have high blood pressure. You're going to build a lot of pressure in that home. You're going to feel like a prisoner in there. <laughs> okay. And so you eat too much junky food, too much toxin, your blood vessels are going to start to constrict. Okay. So now let's go into the doshas. So how do these five elements combine into the three doshas? Okay, so doshas, a lot of people get confused about what dosha really means. And it's a little bit like the gunas. Gunas are the states of mind. So what I'm trying to say is that doshas, even though it means that there's a fault. So when we incarnated into, into this life, uh, we have, you know, you have Rahu, which is the desire. You have a desire to be here and everybody thinks of it as being bad, yet Rahu without it, you wouldn't be here. You would not reincarnate into this life. So dosha is the same thing. Dosha is a fault. But think of it as, thank God there's a fault because I'm here. <laughs> Hmm. So a lot of people say, oh, what dosha are you? You are not a dosha type. What <laughs> dosha? <laughs> I, I hear people saying, I'm a pitta. Well, you know, everybody has all the doshas. Now, it's like asking basically, who are you? It's like asking that. Yeah, what sun sign are you? Well, it's in the Western world. Are you a Leo? Well, you know, I, I am pretty much everything. <laughs> I mean, and that's another domain, but I like to equivocate the doshas because you are everything. You are, you are Vata, Pitta, and Kapha, or else you wouldn't be here. And dosha does not really become a, a fault, to say, per, per se, until it is out of balance. So we're all born perfect. Okay, so let's go through the doshas real quick. But when you have... I'm going to start with the heavier elements and I'm going in tune with how when you're born and you're a baby, even when you're formed in the embryo, you're first water. Oh. Okay. So, you know, when babies, uh, are, we are born, you're just like these fluid little balls of earth. <laughs> okay. And so water and earth together is kapha. And so what is kapha in the, um, in Vedic astrology would be, uh, moon has vata and kapha. So moon can be thought of as a kapha kind of uh, graha. Graha means planet. And then mercury is tridoshic, which means mercury is vata, pitta, and kapha. There's a certain oh. element of earthiness to mercury because mercury is earth. Okay. And actually, it is one of the only um, uh, grahas that planets that is earth. Okay, because sun is fire, moon is water, Mars is fire, Jupiter is akash, which is space, Venus is water, and Saturn is air. So Mercury is Earth. We would never think of that, right? So Mercury has kapha in it. Jupiter, of course, everybody knows Jupiter is expansive. 
<laughs> it's loving, water <laughs> loving, <laughs> but it's also earthy because it also symbolizes, you know, um, money, finances, banks. and all this. Exactly. Link this. Uh, do, do you have some connection? I mean, I want to see how do you link that. For example, like Jupiter gets exalted in Cancer. So, <laughs> uh, I remember your explanation was one of the best that I've heard. And uh, yeah, I mean, from know. the perspective of these things, I mean. Uh, oh, okay. So Jupiter, yeah, uh, Jupiter here obviously would have. You can find so much more of a connection to water. And then when you mix mm -hmm. water and earth, then you get Madas, which is fat. Okay. So, uh -huh. so then you find the Jupiter, even though it's space, well, Jupiter, you know, is expansive and it likes to grow. And as a matter of fact, if you look at somebody's chart, I, mean, I would not say it's a rule, but generally out of all of the um, charts that I've seen, if a person has an exalted Jupiter or has retrograde, uh, has a, uh, a, a not so much, well, swa, like um, in its own house, but you will find that the person has definitely kapha qualities. So like my Jupiter is in fire, so all the kapha has burned out of me. Oh. <laughs> um, but in Jupiter, if you find it in Cancer, which is a water sign, and you find yes. it in, uh-huh, then you will find that the person has kind of this, like a little more heaviness, kind of more oh. solid. I've found as a rule, but it, you know. Yeah, and different. another thing I have seen is with Jupiter in water sign. I don't know, maybe it's a shallow observation, but I've seen that uh, the moment they will gain, gain some fat in some part of their body, it will not stay. It will just, uh, I don't know how to say in Asmis, there's a word hulunga, which means it will just hover. It will just uh, form a, how do you say, a curve and it will just linger down rather than sticking <laughs> because it's it, a water drop which shapes like this yes yes I, I i've seen that as well because remember that the signs are kind of where all the homes and so imagine water water already will fill up whatever space you give it yes <laughs> and, and jupiter because it's a kosh it's expansive so you combine the water the earth and expansiveness it, it could give you that quality <laughs> Nice. <laughs> okay, so as well, I'll just go through these quickly because it's basically combining the kapha characteristics of heavy. You know, you find something that's heavy like water and earth are the heaviest elements. Um, so the kapha characteristics, kapha food will be heavy. After you eat it, you'll feel slower, which could be nice. So at nighttime, you can have something that's more kapha and it'll be more pacifying. Okay, and, and, and kapha, because these elements are cold, you know, you go and step on the ground in the morning, in the morning mist, you're going to find that it's cold. You, you touch water, it takes a lot of heat and energy to be able to raise the temperature in water. So remember that foods, kapha foods will be heavier, colder. So, you know, you eat a milk and banana, a, kind oh. of a bad combination to begin with. But a lot of people do eat that. They'll have a glass of milk with banana. That's a no-no in Ayurveda because um, you would think they're both uh, the sweet flavors, but yet it's they're, they're, um, the, the, the coldness and the, the heaviness of them for a kapha individual. So maybe for a vata, that would be a little bit better. And the kapha is, um, is sticky, like we talked about. So those are good for vata folks to have stickier foods because the air wants to disperse and you want to bring it back together. And kapha characteristics, it will be stable, okay? So the food is not um, causing air in you, so to speak. So what does a kapha do to our body? Like I spoke before, you put water, hum humidify, uh, humectant. I can't remember what the word is, but it, it lubricates your body. So you'll okay. find people that have kapha have you ever noticed, like, I don't know, maybe even Bharani people, the nakshatra, and I know we haven't talked about that, but, you know, this is like a kind of an earthy kind of, um, you'll find that they have these nice, beautiful, thick hair, beautiful, uh, lubricated skin, thick nails. You know, a lot of them, like even just hair models and, and mo people that have beautiful features will actually have a lot of kapha. They're obviously not out of balance. As okay. most people think, oh, I don't want kapha, I'm going to get fat. Well, no, it's, it's very uh -huh. good to have earth. Earth would be classified as protein in our body. Good hair, 
you know, I don't have a lot of kapha. That's why, you know, thinner hair, not as good skin. So there's, you know, I don't know. I've heard this. Somebody was telling me that in India, everybody wants to be kapha. And here in America, everybody wants to be vata. <laughs> everybody wants to be thin in America. And in India, it's like, you know, everybody wants that nice, thick, luscious, and earthy body. So, so here we go. And